So if you ever shared a URL on X or Facebook or Instagram, you might've noticed that some of these URLs generate really nice looking images where people can click on these images and get redirected directly to the web application that the URL is pointing to. So these are called social media cards and they're a great way to market your own products and also just drive up engagement and sharing of your web application. So I'm gonna show you how I built this out and it's actually a lot easier than you might think it is if you haven't done this before. So over here, I worked on a Next.js application that allows people to auction on Christmas items. And if I were to go ahead and just click start bidding, there's a nice page with some filters and also a list of all of the items that we can auction on. Let's just go ahead and click view auction of this vacuum. And that redirects us to a nice product page where we can see the price of the item and the leading bid price of that auction item. So often what you want to do in your applications is have some type of share on X or share on Facebook button so that when they click on this button, it'll take them directly to X and they can just post that to their feed so other people can go to your product by clicking the link. So to achieve this functionality, I'm actually using a service called Cloudinary, which is the sponsor of this video, which allows me to basically upload all of my media assets here. And I can use those media assets when trying to build out this social media card. And I can also add some nice overlays on the card using dynamic data that comes from the page itself. So for example, if the leading bid price is $123.99, you could see that, that that is dynamically getting put into the card right here. I'm also using a library called Next Cloudinary, which really integrates seamlessly into Next.js. They have a lot of useful components over here that you can just start using your Next.js application that can point directly to your Cloudinary media storage. They also have a nice section that talks about social card image templates. So if you scroll through here, they give you a nice walkthrough of how you can make dynamic or static cards. And I'm gonna walk you through how I created that card with a base image, some overlay text, and also show you how you can apply some effects and filters to the images if you want to. All right, so the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do if you want to get started with Cloudinary is you go make an account. And then if you go to the dashboard, you'll get an API key. Now all we'll need for this tutorial is the cloud name. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. And I'm gonna show you if I go to my .env file of my Next.js application, we have a next public Cloudinary cloud name and I went ahead and just paste that in. So if you also have a Next.js application, that's all you really need to do to get set up with integrating with Cloudinary. The second thing I wanna point out is inside the package JSON, I already have Next Cloudinary set up, which is a library that provides a bunch of nice React slash Next components that lets you just kind of hook in the Cloudinary and display images and do image modifications on those images. If I go to my data directory, I do have a list of just hard-coded products where each one of these has a public Cloudinary ID. So you'll see here I have a Christmas directory and I have a public ID here. So to show you where that comes from, if you go to Media Explorer, you'll see that I have a Christmas folder. And inside of that folder, that's where I have all of these images. You can see up here in the top left, we have the public ID. So this is the ID that you're gonna wanna grab. You can just go ahead and copy it from this page. And this is where I kind of pasted those IDs in. But what we wanna focus on is the social media card. So how exactly does this work in my Next.js application? So when someone clicks on one of these cards, it's gonna take you to a products slash product ID page. So if I go to app, I go to products, and I go to my ID route and I click on page. So inside this page, you'll see there's a couple of things. The most important thing that we're gonna to touch on in this video is generate metadata. But there's also a product page that shows the product image. It shows that share on Twitter button that I talked about and it also shows like the ratings, uh, the leading bid, place a bid button, et cetera, which is all corresponding to the stuff that's displayed on this page. So let's talk about the important part, which is how do I get these social media cards showing up? And before I dive into that, I do wanna share a nice extension that you should probably have set up, which allows you to preview on your locally running application what your page will look like when shared on X or Facebook, et cetera. So I have a Chrome extension called Social Share Preview, which is free to set up and install. And that is what I'm using to basically, when I'm on a page, I just click on this extension icon and now I can see what this card will look like on various platforms. So you see here we have Facebook, we got X, um, LinkedIn, et cetera. So definitely recommend installing some type of extension so you can quickly prototype these cards as you're kind of messing with them. So let's look at the actual code. I'm gonna go to my Next.js page that we're kind of um, curious about. 
And in Next.js, there is a generate metadata function that you can use. What this function allows you to do is you can dynamically generate metadata based on like database entries. And Next is going to use that metadata to share with these social media companies so that the social media companies knows how to display your cards. So in our case, what I'm doing is I'm basically fetching the product using the product ID that comes over as a parameter. So if you go back here, notice that we have one up here. That is our product ID. And I use that to fetch it from the database. And if there is no product, I just go ahead and return an empty object. Um, but otherwise, we need to figure out a way to return some metadata so that the social media cards know how to display some stuff. So I go ahead and create a metadata object. This is just a metadata type that comes from the next library. So inside of this metadata object, there's an open graph property where you can basically specify the image that you want to display when someone shares your page. And for URL, we're going to be using a function called get cloudinary OG image URL, which you can point it to one of those public image IDs that I talked about earlier. So let's just go ahead and point it to a hard coded one. Um, this is the Christmas background, right? So if I go to my Clannery Media Explorer, you'll see here, this is like the background that I'm using for the base um, image card. Just go ahead and save that. And now if I were to try to preview this card, you'll see that we have that nice Christmas tabletop with some ornaments on it. So that's going to be like the base image that we're going to use. So this Clannery function provides you a way to add overlays on top of that base image. So in our case, let's just go ahead and add another image which is going to be our public Cloudinary ID that points to the product. So remember, we got the product from the database, and that is going to have a reference to the public Cloudinary image ID. So if I save this and go back, notice that we get that vacuum cleaner displayed on the far right. Now you have the ability to like position things on this card. So in our case, we're saying position this on the northeast of our card. Go ahead and change the width and the height to some hard-coded um, values. So now for the text, how do we get text displayed on this card? You can just go ahead and start appending additional overlay elements to that overlay array. In our case, we're going to say, let's go ahead and create some text, give it the color red. You can change the font family. You can change the font size. You can kind of give it some absolute positioning and you can give it some gravity. So in our case, we're going to position it from the Northwest at this location. And we want it to have the text of Christmas auction. So if I save this, and go back, you'll see that in our preview, we have a nice Christmas auctions text just showing up at the top of the card. So super easy to just add overlays and text. Another thing that's really important to add in would be sharing the product name, right? This is a vacuum, so we want the name of the product to display somewhere. Um, we're just going to go ahead and change the text to white um, and make it a little bit bold. So let's just go ahead and save this. And you'll see that now we have the product name. This is bid now for a vacuum. Pretty cool. Now, the last thing we want to add in is the actual price for bidding. So let's just go ahead and take the current bid price from the object, and we're going to go ahead and display that as well. So there you have it. There is a card that is all dynamically set up. And to kind of show that, let's go back to a different page. I'm going to go ahead and click on the coffee brewer because I like drinking coffee. And notice right there, we get all of that data dynamically generated and put in that card for us with very little effort to get set up. Let's go to the Espresso Maker and make sure that looks pretty good. Oh, that's a pretty good one too. So now that we have the card set up and dynamically generating, let's go ahead and add a share on Twitter button. So to make this button, I brought in a React share library. If you look over here, they have the ability to share on all these different social media platforms. Um, in our case, we're just gonna share on X. And to get this working, the way React works with like server components and client components, I have to basically use an effect to get the current Windows href. So depending on if this is running locally or if this is deployed on Vercel, that's going to get the full URL. And I'm going to store that in some state here. So now that we have the location and state, I basically pass that into a URL property of the Twitter share button. Now I am appending a random number at the end of this. The reason I'm doing this is typically social media sites. Once your card is generated for the first time for your URL, it's going to cache that, which means that if we have dynamic data, such as like the bid price, we need to make sure that when people share the same URL over and over again, it's not going to get cached in social media. So for example, I think X is going to cache social media cards up to seven days. So basically, you just want to add something to the query string so that when more people share the product, it's going to be sharing the most recent bid price of that product. And it's going to force the social media sites to basically recompute this um, generate metadata endpoint.
So now if you click on that button, it's going to go ahead and load up X with that URL. And because this is localhost, obviously the preview is not going to show up here. But when you have it deployed to a real environment, that'll show your product card. So a couple of final remarks is I'm using a dynamic generate metadata function. If you have a card that doesn't really have dynamic data in it, I would probably recommend just exporting a constant called metadata so that you don't actually have to invoke a serverless function to compute this um, object. So as you can see in the next Cloudinary documentation, you can just export a constant object here. And that's going to basically just have some dynamic content that's never going to change based on your URL. So this would be good for if you had like a home page where you didn't have dynamic content on it, I'd probably recommend this approach. But again, in my approach, I do have dynamic content such as the name of the product, some bid pricing. So I want to use the actual generate metadata function. So another thing that's worth pointing out is that you have the ability to apply a lot of the built-in Cloudinary effects directly inside this image generation. So if I go ahead and just paste in effects colorize, that's going to change how the image is going to look. In our case, it basically just made the entire background white. But if you go to the Cloudinary guides, they have a whole section of image effects and enhancements. For example, they have a Cartoonify. So if I go back and just add Cartoonify True to that effects list, and I go back and preview what that card looks like, notice that it does give a cartoonish effect to the various background images. I can also try to apply it to the Espresso Maker too. Just copy this and find where we're displaying the Espresso. I think it's right here. I'll paste that in, go ahead and save and go back. And there you have it. It actually applied a Cartoonify filter to that image. So this is another really powerful feature of Cloudinary is that you can just apply effects to all your images on the fly and they have a ton of different effects to your disposal that you can use. And the majority of things that you see such as like resizing and cropping, there is a way to apply them like we saw inside of these overlays as you're defining these images. So again, that's all I want to share with you in this video. Like I mentioned, it's very important to have the ability to share your pages on social media. It's a great way to market your application and to have some hype be buzzed around what you're building. So that about wraps up the video. Be sure to go check out Cloudinary and play around with these features for yourself. They have a lot of powerful options when it comes to anything media related, images, videos, you name it. They even have filters related to AI, which I did in a previous sponsor video, which I was really impressed with. But like always, I do have a Discord channel in the description below where you can join if you want to find a place to kind of hang out and ask questions to other developers. And other than that, have a good day and happy coding.